Hello, my lovely YouTubers! So in this video, we're going to be looking at all of the orchids that I got from my local Orchid Society raffle. They had their yearly Christmas party, so I went and got um, six new plants from that raffle. Spent $20, got six plants in return, so not a bad deal, about three and a half dollars per plant, give or take. Uh, so really good deal on my end. Some of them will need a little bit more TLC, but that's okay because I like taking care of them. So it'll be really rewarding once they do end up blooming. So I'll be showing you those. I also wanted to talk a little bit about viruses because our speaker was Steve Arthur, who is a really well-known grower, has his own greenhouse in Graniteville, South Carolina. So he came and spoke to us about orchid viruses, which was really really eye-opening and scary, really scary. Just thinking about how many viruses are out there and how there's no cure for any of the orchid viruses out there. So that was scary. I'll be talking about that. And I also wanted to show you guys, because a lot of you have been saying I need to grow some carnivorous plants because they are so similar in care to orchids. So I actually did pick up a carnivorous plant today I was going to purchase from a well-known carnivorous plant grower, but I was afraid I would kill it. And there's this hair really bothering me. <laughs> I was afraid I would kill it and then not get a return on my money. So I picked this one up at Lowe's for $9, which isn't bad in my eyes at all. And he's super healthy. He must have just come off the truck because most of the time Lowe's has those really, really desperate looking carnivorous plants. And this is a Saracenia purpurea, I think. Yes, Saracenia purpurea. So uh, this is actually, I believe, a native carnivorous plant to South Carolina. We have a ton. In fact, Venus flytraps, not a lot of people know, but they come from bogs of North Carolina and South Carolina. So you guys probably know that, but a lot of people I talk to, they're like, oh, Venus flytraps, those are tropical over in Asia. No, actually, a lot of them indigenous to North Carolina. So the Saracenia, the uh, pitcher plants here, they are actually, I believe, native to South Carolina. So this one should be fairly easy for me to keep happy, I hope. And then if this one does end up surviving, I will purchase some more expensive ones. But in case this one dies, then I've only spent $9. It doesn't have any water or whatever that juice is on the inside of the pitcher, so I don't know if that's a bad thing or not. Um, hopefully it's not, because it looks really healthy, if you can see. But this is my first pitcher plant, so I guess we'll see how things go. So Steve Arthur came and talked to us about orchid viruses. Now, there are many viruses that affect orchids, unfortunately, but the ones that he talked about were the odontoglossum ring spot virus, the cymbidium mosaic virus, and the tobacco mosaic virus, because those are the three most common ones affecting collections today. Now, there's no cure for orchid viruses, which makes it scary, but especially scary because he said that each one of us in that room had a virus in their collection and they didn't even know about it. And, you know, some people did admit to having viruses in their collection that they did know about. So that makes me scared because I don't know if my orchids have viruses, but he says that, you know, chances are I do because a lot of orchids don't present symptoms of having a virus. Now, you can't look at an orchid and say, oh, that orchid has tobacco mosaic virus. He said the only way that you can really know if an orchid has a virus is to do a tissue sample. So because you are looking at your orchid's leaves and you notice some spots or discoloration, or you have a flower that has a color break in it, it's not necessarily indicative of a virus. The only true way to tell is by a tissue sample. So there are labs that will test for you. Critter Creek Labs does testing for viruses and you can buy little test strips. I plan on purchasing some of those just so I can show you guys what the process involves and I'll be really scared if the test comes back positive. So I'll be purchasing some of those to show you guys in another video and I'll also be doing a video 
on the globe amaranth. That's globe amaranth. And common name for that plant is bachelor button. And the bachelor button is this cute little purple flower, but it has properties for detecting viruses. So you scratch a little bit of the leaf, and then you scratch a little bit on your orchid leaf, put the two together, and you know, rub the juices. And if the orchid presents, I believe he said, with white streaking, that means your orchid is infected with a virus. So I plan on doing that sort of little scientific experiment with you guys, just to see if it actually does work. Um, if I happen to find a virus plant in my collection, I'll use that one to test with, just to see the results. So I'm really excited to do those videos for you guys, because there's not a whole lot known about how viruses are, you know, just how to kill them. There's no way right now to kill an orchid virus. So it's very unfortunate. It has been known to wipe out entire collections. So a lot of the big nurseries, all the employees are wearing gloves to handle the orchids and they're using new equipment for each plant that they handle. And they're actually using flame to uh, essentially disinfect their tools because he was saying that alcohol doesn't always get the orchid virus. What happens with a flame is that it denatures the protein covering on a virus. So when you denature that protein, you essentially kill the virus. So he was saying not all alcohols clean your tools like you think that they do. So that scares me because usually I'll use alcohol, isopropyl alcohol to disinfect my tools. But from now on, I'll be using flame. So that was scary as well. But uh, he really did an excellent job of explaining all of the different orchid viruses, the makeup of a virus, how they're contracted. So just be careful with your own collections. And um, that's really all I can say about that. It's scary. It's, it's really scary because in nature, in the wild, orchids have not presented with viruses. The only reason that orchids have developed viruses is because of humans. So that is frightening that in nature, they don't have viruses. They don't have to worry about that. But because humans have gotten involved with their breeding, now all of these viruses are starting to pop up. They did an experiment with chewing animals like uh, crickets and caterpillars, and a very, very small percentage of those actually transmitted the viruses. And then they did another experiment with sucking insects like aphids and they showed that and snails and showed that no uh, viruses were transmitted by those sucking insects. The major vector for orchid viruses is humans, unfortunately. So anyways, if you guys have any questions or you know more about orchid viruses, comment down below. I'm interested in hearing uh, what you guys have to say about orchid viruses. So we are now going to get into the plants that I got from the Orchid Society meeting. And at the end of this video, there's actually a little montage. I took video of the plants that were in the show and tell. And I also took video of all the plants that were in the raffle table. Not a lot of raffle plants this go around. So that was kind of disappointing, but hopefully next society meeting, there'll be many plants for me to raffle and win. Now, I always get the weirdest looks when people say, oh, you must have a greenhouse because you have so many orchids or you're getting all of these orchids. And I say, no, I don't. I actually just, you know, keep them in my south facing window. <gasps> oh my goodness, really? That's amazing. Like they're so amazed that I'm able to keep my orchids happy with a south facing window. Don't let people tell you what is best for your orchids or tell you that you can't grow something. That really annoys me. I got that huge monster Catlia and the guy was like, you're not going to be able to grow it because you don't have enough light to keep it happy. Well, I'd love to rub the buds in his face and be like, oh yeah, this plant is blooming. <laughs> So don't ever let people tell you that you can't grow something. I always get it because, you know, I don't have a greenhouse. You know, I'm not in the cool club, but hopefully one day I will have a greenhouse um, because greenhouses are awesome. But anyways, so let's get into the plants that I got. A lot of them, like I said, they're going to need some TLC. So this one here 
definitely needs some TLC. You can see the shriveled pseudo bulbs. A nice green root right there though. So it has a new growth right here, which makes me hopeful, and a new growth there. And possibly a new growth over here. Not sure if you can see that. This one is Catlia Swan Lake Cimarron Valley by Catlia Palti Yamada Mendenhall. No idea what that one's supposed to look like, but the tag says white with yellow. So a white bloom with a yellow throat is what I'm guessing. I'm gonna have to start doing that with my plants if, you know, cause it's hard to remember all the time what the blooms look like. So maybe write on the tag what they look like. That's a good idea. Now I did have to treat these guys with a systemic cause I found a lot of mealy bugs on them. So I'm keeping them separated from my collection and I treated them with a systemic pesticide to sort of hopefully get rid of those um, mealy bugs. This one is Layla Catlia Mishima Luster Clonal Name Gene. Really, most of these are just dehydrated. You can see those tiny, pathetic little sh pseudo bulbs there, but they just need to be watered. That's really all they're wanting. This one here is actually super, super robust. So you can see all of the roots on this guy here. And this one is Brassolela Catlia Golden Zell by Brassolela Catlia Memora, Memoria Dorothy Birch. Orchids have the weirdest names. The next one is another one that I treated for, well, I treated all of them for um, mealybug. This one has some mealybug right there, if you can see. In the little leaf crotch. This one is Layla Catlia Palo Bronze Newberry by Brasso Layla Catlia Oconee Mendenhall. And over here, this one I'm excited about is Catlia Seabreeze Blue Ribbon. So this is a blue blooming Catlia. So that would be really cool if I could breed this one with my orchid from Carter and Holmes and have a super blue Catlia. And the last one is Layla Catlia Gila Wilderness Pine Knot by Catlia Horus Maxima. So these were all of the orchids that I got from my local society meeting and I can't wait to raise them and they just need a little bit of extra um, care to bounce back and they'll be completely fine and it'll be really rewarding once they bloom. Alrighty guys, so if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below, subscribe to my channel, enter my giveaway, because there's a video for my giveaway, 100 subscribers, thank you guys, and follow me on Twitter, all that good stuff, and I will now show you the montage.